Hi, everyone. Welcome to this Google Digital Garage training session on Build Engaging Presentations. My name is Benedict. I'm a trainer for Google's free skills training program, Google Digital Garage. Just a bit about myself. I'm an experienced coding specialist and digital skills trainer, as well as having a background in the digital creative industry and worked in that sector for over 20 years. I would also like to introduce our moderator, the amazing Chami. Chami is also a Google Digital Garage coach and will be interacting with you and answering just about all of your questions via the instant chat just to the right there. You can identify the moderator by his name, Chami, as well as a little blue spanner next to his name. Now, before we actually start, I just want to call out a few things to help you today. Firstly, if you are having any trouble viewing the webinar at the moment or any time in the future, please do try refreshing your page. Normally, Control R or Command R. If you would like uh, to join the instant chat today, and please do, it's a great opportunity for you to fire away with questions, interact with us and all the rest, which is fabulous. You do need a YouTube account though, which you can very easily set up by clicking in the box on the right there. Now we will be pausing throughout the session to answer some of the different questions, which Chami will hopefully kindly pass across to me. So please do make sure that you take part in this and everything, it's a great opportunity. Um, if you would like to check out our schedule as well of upcoming webinar training, please do see it in the information in the description below, which links you through to our website. Okay, let me just quickly uh, introduce and also welcome the people I've seen coming in to join us so far. Um, welcome, Rushil and Michaela and Kevin. Welcome to all three of you. Let us know where you're signing on from. It'd be quite fascinating because it's really nice to hear all of you, ah, men ala, uh, ala hecham rak, welcome, welcome to you two. Um, so it's great to have you all. Let us know where you're signing on from. Ah, uh, Rekta from uh, Jakarta, welcome. Uh, Azar from Malaysia, welcome. Uh, George, welcome as well. Um, men ala from Egypt, wow, excellent. Uh, Nat Saros, uh, welcome from Tel Aviv. And Mohammed. Uh, Kaja, welcome from India, and Jewel from the Philippines, Mi Mihaela from Romania, excellent, and is Stacy um, from from Florida, excellent, Stacy, sorry, Stacy, and Samu Samu D from the USA, and Mangesh from India, um, and Terry from London. Wow, this is great. Rosa from Brazil, excellent. I speak Spanish, I hablo español, but not. Portuguese, I'm afraid. Um, Sasmo uh, from England, uh, Christina from Trinidad, Tulonga from Namibia. Wow, there's so many places. Chris from Holland, um, and Bettina from London. This is great to see all of you. Okay, I better get started on this talk soon, otherwise, we won't be getting started. But it's great to see all of you and welcome all of you because it's, and also uh, Sonda from uh, Denmark. Great opportunity because the whole point is we're here to talk to you, to go through the different talks and everything. Obviously, uh, Chami will be answering all your different immediate questions because obviously once I get started in the talk, I'll be quite involved with that. Um, but Chami will pass some across to me, which is great. I'll answer some of those questions as well along the way. So great opportunity. It is very much interactive. Oh, uh, Paula from Ecuador, Liz from London. Welcome, all of you. So great to have you all here with us. I'll try to keep my eye open for any more who come on come on board there. So today we're going to help you with crafting your approach to presentations. Second one will be creating effective presentations. And the third one is actually learning essential presentation skills. These are the three areas that we're going to particularly concentrate on. So the use of presentations to really achieve that desired effect and where to start to actually create a presentation from scratch. We'll be helping with that. And then remembering the basic skills in front of an audience, which is very important, and then gaining confidence to present effectively, more than anything with practice. Um, is it, let me see now, we are uh, from Sudan. Welcome. It's great to have you here. So, okay. Um, now, there is a great opportunity here. I'm afraid at the moment it's only for people who are based in the UK. Sorry about that. But at the present, it's only in the UK. 
but there are free career certificates which are available from Google. So are you looking to improve your job ready skill set? Maybe sign up for Google Career Certificates at goo.gle forward slash career cert UK. Thank you very much, Chami. Chami's provided you there with a link, which is fabulous. Um, I'm afraid at the moment it's only in the UK, but hopefully eventually a lot of these things will be expanding, of course. Obviously, that's what we want more than anything to present to the whole world. Okay, so um, obviously we cover different areas in the careers to do with IT support, project management, data analytics, and UX design. The thing is, um, they worked with some of the top, um, you know, BBC, uh, Deloitte and everything, working with the companies and working out where there's a particular need in the particular industries. So these career certificates are very much for the work oriented to get you ready to be able to work in those kind of environments. And of course, they were helped by Princess Trust as well. So there's a lot of things there to assist you and help you. Obviously, if you're working already, then of course, this is this can be added to your your job ready skill set already to add on different things as well okay so what's the most memorable presentation you have experienced maybe you can share with us that would be fabulous um it could be really something really engaging you know a really engaging boss or a dreadful college lecturer you know <laughs> um obviously don't mention any names or, or you know TED talks but but it could be some certain things that maybe you've watched, which you know you've uh, found quite memorable. I must admit, unfortunately, mine is memorable on the wrong, the bad side. I'm afraid, the person who was giving the talk, uh, she was actually reading really her thesis through to us, um, which is nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, it, it kind of lacked. It sort of it was just reading really. It was not really lifted or. She, uh, you know, I mean, you, you kind of want it taken off the page. That's the whole thing, sort of, so people can really get involved and take part and enjoy it. So, yeah, so that's that's one I I can remember. So if you can think of any particular ones, do share it with us. That'd be fa uh, fascinating. So why do you actually present? All right. So, of course, um, chances are your career depends on how you speak, write, and think, particularly in that order. So speaking writing and thinking. So nobody knows what you think until you speak or write. <laughs> so these days we have shorter attention spans, I'm afraid, for reading, not thanks to social media on that side. If you can actually move the minds of others, they see in you the ability to get things done and they see that in your language and expression. So inform, inspire, instruct, entertain, persuade, all of these different things that come through, okay? There's one particular one I'm going to be showing you. Now, I must admit, we didn't test this video, but hopefully this is all going to work. Um, I'm going to ask you as well, Chami, take me off the screen when I'm playing this, um, because, you know, so they can take full attention on this. Here goes. This is... Sorry, I'm just going to say, this is actually, you can see Nilofar Merchant is actually talking about this particular thing, and it's beautifully clear and simple what she's putting across. Here goes. I'm sorry, I gather that you can hear no sound at present. Um, okay. All right. I'll just put it to the beginning again. What you're doing right now at this very moment is telling you. With the cars or the internet or even that little mobile device that you're talking about, the technology you're using the most almost every day is this. They're tush. Nowadays, people are sitting nine to three hours a day, which is more than we're sleeping at 7.7 hours. Sitting is so incredibly prevalent, we don't even question how much we're doing it. And because everyone else is doing it, it doesn't even occur to us that it's not okay. So instead of going to coffee meetings or fluorescent lit conference room meetings, I ask people to go on a walking meeting to the tune of 20 to 30 miles a week. It's changed my life. You'll be surprised at how fresh air drives fresh thinking and the way that you do, you'll bring into your life an entirely new set of ideas. 
Let me just explain that a little bit because I know some of you did not actually hear that very clearly. My apologies for that. Um, but the, yes, okay, the audio is muffled. But let me just tell you what she was saying. She was basically saying that when you think about it, when we actually get up and walk, we go for a walk and everything and, uh, you know, go chat and everything, walking, getting some exercise, as she said, you know, getting getting up off our tush, you know, getting up off, uh, off our, onto our feet to walk around. So the big thing here is you just getting up and walking, going for a walk to, to actually talk about different ideas. And she puts it beautifully clearly. Sorry, you couldn't hear that very clearly, but she puts it beautifully clearly, um, you know, in just a couple of words, in quite a sort of musing as well. But she's basically saying this really helps if you just get off and you walk. It's nice and simple and clear. So... That is, of course, a TED Talk particularly, and often you'll see some different good ideas within TED Talk to give you ideas with these different things. Anyway, my apologies for the for the vo for the volume there, um, some issues, but we'll look into that and get that corrected. But at least you've got the basic idea that she's putting across. Okay, so now the big thing is here now telling a story now story is so important stories are really the secret ingredient of presentations that really make a difference in the world and also achieve the desired results that actually inspired the presentation in the first place so stories are much more interesting than facts because you know stories really entertain us i mean think about it you'll go and see a film get really involved in it and you go and then you suddenly realize you're not alone there's all these people around you and they're also really involved in the story. So organize your facts so that they follow a simple narrative. It really does help. And keep each slide to one key idea. Or depending on the content, build the key ideas incrementally so it's easy to follow. Now, one of the big things as well with story is stories actually have a structure and really take the audience on a journey the simple rule of having, you know, so a beginning where you actually set up where what you're actually presenting, a middle where the audience goes on a journey of discovery with you, and then also an ending where you tie the thoughts together and reveal any final insights. Okay, so all of those different areas are really important in the structure of a story, okay? All right, so... Let us move on here now. So some basic story types. Here we've got here for the origin, I started my marketing business with a laptop in my garage and now have workspaces in 30 countries across the world. We've got the future vision. Now this is the opposite of the origin story. It paints a dream or picture of what could be. And then we've got failure and success stories. Now, these are essentially didactic and have a certain outcome or learning you're trying to explain. And then, of course, there's a realization all about solving a problem um, of being stuck and then having their inspiring eureka moment. Now, it's really important that to work through these different ideas. These are the kind of types that you can actually build on, all right? So it's really important that you work on these different sides, okay? So I hope that gives you an idea with those particular things that we've covered. Um, I'm just gonna check quickly with, uh, with that side because I gather we're having some issues with uh, the chat, um, just two seconds. Okay, I'm sorry, I can't really look at it now, but um, let us move on from the basic story types. So, going through each of these different particular areas and, and those particular kind of structure and style, which is so important, okay? Gives you an idea and gets you started. Okay. Now, um, so using, using story types, so there could be, for example, a budget report, company update, idea pitch. So these are typical sort of presentations you might give at work and the types of stories you might want to tell to actually make these more interesting to your audience. So there's a finance report. You might, you know, use a success or fa failure story and focus on what you learned and how you're actually moving forward. A company update, for example, it could be an origin story, might be interesting. 
especially for new people, so they understand how you got to where you are and what the significance is. An idea pitch, this might either, you know, a vision story, what the future looks like if your idea works, or even a realization story, some of those different areas there, okay? So what is the goal? You know, no one is actually impressed by a presentation that rambles because you start building a presentation. There are lots of things to consider. First and perhaps most important is to work out what you want to achieve. There must be a reason you are presenting. After the presentation, what do you want the participants to do? So the goal of the TED Talk, you know, really is to get people to consider walking, meeting, or different approaches, for example. Just give you an example there. So it's very important what you want to put across. It can be nice and beautifully simple, and it's that storytelling that really grabs people and gets people interested, okay? Sorry about the captions. I'm afraid the captions are set up. They're all running fine on my side. I'm afraid sometimes with technology, <laughs> normally it works fine, but I'm afraid not always. So I'm afraid I can't really fix that from my side. It's all set up and it is running. So my apologies for that. Anyway, so that's particularly the goal, particular side. Then on to what do you want them to actually think? Outline the structure of your presentation in a way that people can really follow easily. You know, people attend presentations to obtain information, but consider how you want to influence your audience and what thoughts you need them to take away besides facts, you know, because often people will only remember one or two things from it. And it's important, what do you want them to walk away? What are those one or two or three things you want them to walk away with? So what moments in the story can you get them to really think about a topic or a fact you are explaining and how these bring insights? You know, try to highlight these and integrate them with your presentation. Keep that in mind. Those are your kind of goals to keep in mind when, you get, when you're preparing and also when you're giving your presentation, okay? And when do you want them to feel? You know, you can influence the way people feel when listening to your presentation, especially if you build a rapport. So, for example, humor can be employed to lighten the tone of a subject and invite the audience to relax and be more open to your message. Another technique is to personalize the narrative so that your audiences may empathize with you. Use your personal stories to highlight certain important ideas. Building a connection with those you're presenting to make the most dry topic more engaging. And when you are face to face, you know, a simple way is making eye contact with the audience and inviting them to participate. It's so important that you're talking to everyone. It's that eye contact which is so important. So when online, use the chat to really call participants out by name. That's what I'm trying to do when I'm calling your different names and everything. Um, so they really know their contributions are being noted or their, their communication, the contributions and everything. So important. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, absolutely, Kevin. That one might have solved the problem. I hope I was able to retell the story sufficiently in detail. Do check it online, though, anyway, another time, uh, the YouTube one. You can find that one there. I'm pretty sure it is on, online. Um, so, you know, do, so you can go through it in your own time and, and actually hear the talk. It's a great talk. Beautifully clear and simple and to the point. Anyway, um, which, of course, is what you're particularly trying to get across, you know, that thing that people walk away with. Um, so what's the one thing you want them to take away? Okay, so you might want them to take away, you know, for the whole presentation, one thing from each section, maybe. Remember that people will forget a lot of your content. So refer back to your goal and don't tell them lots of things they don't need to know. So don't go into too much detail. Remember the TED Talk, that's good here, and that's where I'm, I related what the story was. It was very clear anyway, I can tell you, that the presenter wanted us to take away one thing, the need to be more active in our day-to-day -day lives. We often get sitting down and it's getting us up and walking around. Those of us who have dogs, pets, take them for a walk. And often when we're out there walking, the, I mean, I go for exercise every single morning. I go walking and I run as well around a park nearby where I live. And often a lot of my creative ideas will come to me then. I, I compose for films, so 
a lot of the different things will come to me when I'm actually walking or doing something completely different, you know? Um, so it's really useful those those times. And of course, I'll be composing, composing, and I go away and I suddenly come up with an idea, I almost need to scribble it down, you know, what I've just composed. So yeah, it's, it's, it's taking yourself away from the sort of typical environment that you're working in just to walk and everything. And everything is creative. I mean, yeah, I mean, I compose for films, but there's many different areas. And no matter what you might think that they're not creative, like accountants or whatever, it is still got its creative elements without a doubt. So it's very important to think of that, just to, to get up and walk and everything. Anyway, um, so very important to work out what is the one thing you want them to take away. Just Put it down to one at least. Okay, fine, you want three, I understand, but what is the most important one? Um, I used to teach, and I mean, and maybe a lot of you have taught before in your experience and everything, and one of the big things is often we go through, when you're a teacher, you go, this is what we're going to cover, and then at the end, you recap on those things. Of course, we do in these talks as well, and I have a lot of experience when I was lecturing and coding for game design and everything, that you need often that kind of thing to refer back to, okay, this is what... This is, these are the important points. Because a lot of the rest they will forget. Okay. So basic structure and flow. So how does all of this come together? Essentially, it gives your presentation structure and flow. And structure and flow are so important. Really, really important. For yourself as well. If you haven't got a structure and flow, you know, it gives you more confidence. And, and you know what you're doing. You know where you are in your particular talk. So by giving it a beginning, a middle, and an end, as we mentioned actually with stories, that you know they do more for emotional connection than any other speech technique, particularly the you know the stories. The more personal and authentic, it's you who's presenting. It's no one else. It's you. I used to be. I'm trained as an actor. I used to act as well. And of course, one of the big things is at the end of the day, like method acting and everything. To a large extent, you're acting yourself. <laughs> At the end of the day, the more you can be yourself, not someone else, and when they play very complicated characters, often they're finding that within themselves and then they're acting those particular roles, but they're still, as it were, you could say, really being themselves still. So the more personal and authentic, the more powerful the response you'll receive, okay? So consider the goals of the presentation. These really create your problem and solution narrative always considering how you want the audience to think and feel for each part. But to make sure all these elements in your structure have flow, it is vital to do your homework. So research for your presentation. Identify the most relevant you know, points. Your outline is simply a list of your main points and subpoints of your presentation. But sit down to really write. Start strong, end strong. Create a compelling hook and angle. If you think about any film you go to see, there's a problem and then there's a dealing with a problem. So use a provocative statement, for example. Tell a brief story or anecdote. Ask a rhetorical question. These are just some ideas. Say something that shocks or surprises your audience. Bring up a problem and share the solution. You know, get your presentation design right. You know, nothing will distract your audience more than a poorly designed presentation. So format your slide text for readability. But remember, a presentation is about you and what you have to say. You are the most important part. Your slides are merely the backup dancers. Okay, um, so telling a story for your audience. Okay, so... For yourselves, over the next few days, set aside some time over the next few days, really, to really practice telling somebody a story about something that inspires you. Set a timer maybe for three minutes. You know, if you have no person or pet, fine, it doesn't matter, at home, then you can record it and leave it a little while before watching it back. Because we are always so self-critical, of course, of ourselves. But at the same time, it is helpful me in the long run to watch yourself and get others to watch it as well, preferably. Think about the type of story you told. Is it origin? Is it future vision, success or failure, realization? And then maybe do it again. Can you tell the same story using one or, or the other uh, story types? Which one works better for you? Which ones do you feel more comfortable with? Okay, on to pausing for questions. <laughs> Let me just see, any questions at the moment? 
I know Chami will be in very busy. Yes, no, no, no questions at present happening. That's fine, no problem at all. Don't forget, great opportunity. Do fire away with any questions you might have whilst I'm giving this talk. Um, you know, great opportunity to ask any questions. Something I'd recommend as well, when you're getting ready for your presentation, do it in front of an audience, friends or whatever it might be, and look out for any nervous tics you might have because nervous tics are, they can be distracting eventually for the audience. But at the same time, if you become aware of it, a colleague of mine who was training and he, he kept on rocking back and forth. And then eventually it became distracting. And But when he became aware of it, he stood there, feet separate. I mean, we'll be discussing a lot of this. Just there talking and communicating, then he felt much more confident and not um, being distracted with that. Um, Ideally, as Stacy, uh, sorry, Stacy, um, the whole presentation can certainly be a story, but you can use elements of the story. So, of course, you can be using the story and then you can come, be coming with the solution and so forth. You can be talking around those different things. But the more you get people involved with the story, then the better. Absolutely. That's right, Jeremy. Sorry. Interrupting with his answer questions there. So building effective presentations. Remember that you, before you deliver a presentation, it's really important that you research and structure your thoughts. Now, in this next section, we will explore the tools you can use to tell your story in an effective way. Okay. Okay, um, so that's my very good question, the length. Okay, I'll let I'll let Chami answer that, not get distracted from this, but let me stay on this. So choosing your presentation tools depends on the audience. You know, how many people do you need to present to? For a job interview or performance, review it maybe one person or a small panel. For a business meeting or sales pitch, you may, might have 10 people. If you're presenting to a conference, you may have 100 people in attendance. And if you're live on the internet, the sky really is the, is the limit. So do they all need the same information? How can you keep different people engaged throughout? Have you thought about engaging more of the senses when you're actually speaking? Can you give them something to look at, something to read, something to listen to, something to do? Now, I know with my own experience, when you're teaching, of course, you're thinking about people who are audio, people who are visual, people are, there's many different areas, but try and make sure that you cover all these different people with their particular areas of learning that they specialize in. So what tools will you need to deliver your chosen presentations? You know, do you have access to a projector at the venue? Does it have the right cables for your laptop? If you're not sure, then make sure you carry an adapter, please. And when selecting an online meeting tool, think about how many people you will actually attend and whether you can actually share your slides and whether, you know, the audience, the size, the location, you know, the message you're trying to convey and the tools and technology available. One of the big things as well is when you're speaking to one person or you're speaking to 100 people, it does have in common that you're communicating to someone who's really important to you. Often when you think, oh my God, I'm uh, presenting in front of my boss or this person who's in charge of the very important people and it kind of kind of puts yourself off from the different things. But if you think about it, that you're, you're actually presenting to someone who's very important to you, could be your mother, could you be your father, could be your, your brother, your sister, nephew, whatever it might be, partner, whatever, you know, it's just really important you put it in that kind of context and then you really feel that you're trying to assist and help that particular person. Then, of course, you expand it out to all these different people you're talking to. Then, of course, once you're dealing with a big group, you've got to do things in slightly different style. So it's like hands up those people who, that kind of thing, you know. All right. So to slide or not to slide? <laughs> the different tools that you're going to be using that you can use for. Now, there's a couple of different aids that we have here. One of them is a mural that you could be using, Canva as well, Slido. Um, now, Slido is quite useful, particularly if you're wanting to get feedback and everything. We do use that quite a lot in the different, some of the different talks. And then um, there's many different tools that you can use for your presentation. 
to a certain extent, make sure that it helps you, but it's not too much of a distraction. You know those slides where, split, I mean, often students, when I was lecturing, they would do their own ones. And of course, they would have the most, you know, things explode and then something else would happen. And then, you know, but at the point, it was just slides and it was just distracting from what they were talking about. So just make sure that the tool is helping you and assisting you and is really there as a background, not, not at the foreground, as it were. So, um, so choosing your tools. Now, many presentations, including online sessions such as today, require you to build a presentation, you know, using a computer, tablet, or mobile phone. Let's take a look at some of the different software which you could be using. So choosing a pres presentation tool. Now, Slides, of course, we use Google Slides as online, free, and great for collaboration. I can tell you when I was lecturing and coding for game design, I did ask uh, the people who were there already, and I said, what do you use? They said, PowerPoint. I was like, okay, PowerPoint. So, of course, I brought it on a memory stick and went from one computer to another, and I lost it. I'm not making a comment about PowerPoint, but at the time, unfortunately, because of the bit rate, I lost it. At the time, I went for Google Slides just because it was simple. I could sign on and I could just use it. So the great thing about this is you can go to different places, sign, so long as you can sign on with your, your Google account, you've got access to them. Because don't forget, if you've got um, you know, a, a Google, if you've got actually a Gmail, if you've got a Gmail, then you've got access to 20 gigabytes. I know most people say gigabytes, it's got to be different. So 20 gigabytes uh, of memory, which is online. If you actually have a Google, Google workspace, you've got 20 gigabytes as well for even more secure memory. But the point is Google Slides, you're not, you, if you're just using Gmail, you're not paying for those, but of course you've got access to them online, which is very useful. Obviously, if you prefer PowerPoint and everything, use that. You know, for Microsoft, there's a cut down versions available online for free as well, which is great. Or you can get the full features in the paid um, version. Prezi is a great one. I remember using that one because it adds animation, but it's not free. The great thing about it, you can zoom in different parts of the document and move across and everything. So it's kind of fun in that way. Um, and then there's Keynote, of course, Apple users will be familiar with that particular one. So they all have their differences, but the thing is they are similar when creating a new presentation. So let's take a closer look at how to get started using Google Slides as just as an example. All right. So Google Slides is a presentation editor in the Google Docs and Drive productivity suite. So because the presentations in the cloud are actually in the cloud and associated with a Google account, users, as I said before, you can access them at any, in, on any computer without having to carry around a flash drive. It also you know, involves real-time collaboration between editors as well as uh, different options. Because if you, if you share this with other people, they can take part. If they give them, allow them to edit it, or you can allow them only to put comments, whatever, you can have other people taking part on the same slides. And also a revision history is kept, which I quite a lot of experience with, with my wife as well. Because if you ruin something, you delete it or something, you can go back into the history so it's really useful. You can go back into the history and see your previous versions there. And also, Google Slides can be converted to different formats. So you can export it as a PowerPoint or PDF. And it's also able to actually edit PowerPoint presentations. So you can do all of these things so it's nice and simple and works with different ones and flexible. OK. Choose a theme. Now, once you, if you're using Google Slides, one of the big things is you've got to decide on a particular theme. You can customize how your presentation tools, uh, sorry, looks in Google Slides, you know, you know, different themes. This is a big thing. When you actually first create a presentation, you can choose from some pre-designed themes to give all, you know, your slides the same background and text styles for consistent look and feel. A theme applies a consistent look to all the slides and in, actually includes slide types, such as you know, main title slides, section breaks, content slides, uh, have a heading and a different type of content. So the formatting for these is all controlled by the theme. So you, 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 know, you get on with building a presentation right from the beginning. So now a more advanced but still easy to use don't worry there's no sound with this one anyway i can if you can check it out there anyway a more advanced but still easy to use feature is to create a custom theme this will actually allow you to incorporate your own colors or brand logos and apply them to every slide in every presentation you do it's important to follow brand guidelines if you if you have them if you're starting out 
it's good to consider coming with simple rules to use for your brand identity okay so check out your check out that particularly for writing for social media session as this goes into branding a, a bit more in detail and also remember just because you have made it look really fancy doesn't mean that you should <laughs> you don't want anything to distract from actually what you're putting across which is very important this is a typical thing okay navigation if you've ever used word processing software like such as word or docs you'll probably already be familiar with some of the features and functionality available okay the navigation bar is found at the top of the screen and allows you to control the look and feel of the presentation in a way of course so you've got there for example uh, undo redo um select a text you've got image there you've got different shapes you can be putting different lines and everything you've got a background you can put in your change layout the theme layout is a general one the theme as well and transition and then of course you can click there present and you can present at the moment i'm presenting on a particular screen and then i've got all the notes and everything on another screen so gives you a basic idea all right so a title, of course, is what really gets us hooked. So think back to the goal of your presentation. Very, very important. How can you use just a few words to tell people what they are going to get from your session? And whether the title of the presentation is listed in a conference program or an online directory, the job of the title is to excite and intrigue people, you know, so they really want to attend it, all right? And use as little text as possible. Too much text can really be overwhelming on a slide. You can use as well, I mean, I've lectured in Coney for game design. You can imagine there's a lot of information you're having to get across. I used to use animation, so I click and then the next thing would come up, the next thing would come up. So you're not having to deal with the whole thing in one go. But it's preferable you keep it simple and easy to digest. So on the left, you've got a whole block. I mean, this, of course, is Lorem Ipsum Delore. You always see the beginning before you start. On the one on the right, it's got down for three bullet points so keep it nice and simple okay so presentation top tips all right be considerate on the number of slides you actually use okay there's no magic number as it depends on the content you're actually delivering but it would be a good idea not to add more slides and presentation minutes okay you want people to really focus on what you're saying rather than reading loads of text, use the bullet points to remind you or reinforce key points, not to be a script. And think about the size of your text. Can it be read at the back? You know, are the characters clear? Plain font is much easier to read than a fancy one. And what about contrast? A dark font is much easier to read than a fancy, sorry, dark font on, on a light background was what I was meaning to say. Dark font on a light background, a light font on a dark background. Remember that, of course. So it's nice and just, you can see it clearly. And well, of course, as, other than text, can you actually use a good quality image, chart or graph to illustrate a particular point? Now, reliable statistics are great to emphasize a point. So just make sure you have the credi credible source to hand if needed, okay? You've got references as well you can refer to. Keep it interesting by varying the pace of your slides. Sorry, I was just going to say they're very important to sometimes pause. Sorry, I just became aware. I was talking too much. When I first... So sometimes you'll move quickly through a series of impactful points, and other times you'll dwell on a story to really explore a particularly important concept. Okay. All right. Uh, running an online presentation. Okay, so when you're actually developing, when you're actually delivering a remote session, it is even more important to think about your audience as you can't see their body language or make eye contact to see how they are getting on. Now, I mean, that's why I've got a, a screen where I can see all the different comments and everything. At the moment, I, I can't concentrate on much. Chami, of course, is in charge of that, and that's absolutely fabulous. I know I can trust him. He's doing really great. Um, but the point is, you know, the more you can see this, because you can't see their body language. So if you're going to build a slide deck, you need to choose a tool that can actually support screen sharing as well. And again, the size of an audience is really important. For a one-to-one -one session, you can jump on a video call using your mobile phone or a free platform such as Google Hangout. For group meeting, you'll need to think about whether video is enabled and make sure everyone mutes their microphone when they aren't talking. A larger session like this one, of course, is streamed. This means, of course, it has to run more like a television broadcast with a presenter and viewers, but there is the added benefit of chat, which, of course, as you say, we're interacting with here, which allows, you know, all of you to actually get involved. 
course, if you want them to. Um, so screen sharing, video for participants, live audience presentations, you know, particular things. Will this just be through a chat or will you have your audience speak through your platform? You will, will you need a moderator? I always recommend that you actually always have a moderator to answer the questions. But the point is at the moment, I obviously I've interacted with all of you, welcoming you all when we when I started, but since then I haven't had a chance to look down at, 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 the, at the chat at all. So, you know, it's really important that uh, you've got someone to deal with it. And also there's another side as well for security as well. If there's someone causing problems, you, you kind of need to be able to have someone to deal with that as well, not distract all the other participants, okay? That's particular for larger numbers, okay? And of course, ease of use, try and make it easy to set up for yourself and, you know, and easy for your participants to really join. And then of course, obviously, if you're having to pay something, you know, you need to work out the costs. All right, so pausing for questions. Any questions at present? Let me just see now. So we've got about two thirds of the way through and we've just finished 40 minutes, 41 minutes. Let's just see if there's any further questions. I'm sure the Chummy has been answering them all left, right and center, but I'm just gonna see if he's got any further questions. Um, because please do use this opportunity. Obviously we're here to help and assist and it's really nice uh, when you do fire away with questions, which I believe you are, which is just so great. So ask your questions. That's what, we, what we're here for doing, answering questions more than anything. Um, there will be a slight delay. Don't forget when I give the talk, when I'm speaking, of course it goes through. Then of course it's broadcast. Um, of course, obviously Chami is interacting with me live, but of course you're seeing it slightly after. So there's different things that you'll be able to see. Um, so Spasma, uh, we've got over here, what about effects? Okay, well, there's so <laughs> depends what you're talking about effects. I mean, you can certainly be using certain effects, but don't forget though, with the different talks and everything, you've got to be careful you don't have, have it distracting from what you're really trying to communicate and put across. Uh, there's software like Prezi that you can use as well. Um, yes, good question, George. Um, so calming the nerves before important presentations. One of the big things is um, uh, more than anything that you practice, practice that really does make perfect. I know we discuss it, there's another slide coming up, we talk about that, but it is so important. But the more practice you can get in front of the camera there, you know, and you can get people to film you, you know, film there with your, the, the mobiles or whatever, that can be really helpful. As Chummy says, breathing is very important, deep breath. And one of the important things is try and center yourself physically there on your two feet. Make sure you're not hopping around from one foot to the other. It's often a reaction because you're getting quiet. Just try and calm yourself so you are facing them. Like I mean, obviously you're not threatening them in any way, but the point is you've got to calm yourself. So the more calm you become, the more calm other people will become as well. The more excited you are about the different topics, they will get excited as well. So don't forget, it'll often mirror itself with the different things. Um, so talking about engagement, let me see now. Uh, me, me, Mihaela, is that correct? Um, talking about engagement activities during the presentation, how many moments like these do you recommend? Um, Mihel, it depends on your talk. Now, if you've got one-to-one, -one, of course, often it's very useful because you're speaking one-to-one, -one, you can often ask that person. The point is you've got to, you kind of got to get your point across, your story across. You've got to give it time so you're going to be able to communicate that. But it's so important that people feel involved. You, you really don't want to kind of be from beginning to end and they don't, they just start to fall asleep. I mean, I'm not saying they're going to fall asleep, but the more they get involved, the more they feel all part of it. We go, we travel around the different parts of the UK, we do face to face. And of course, often that's great because we've got the people in front of us. And before I start giving the talk, I'll introduce myself to some people and say, what's the company you're in? Then of course I can use them because I'm terrible about names, let me just warn you. Um, so I can't remember half that, but I'll remember that person's name and that person's name, or I'll say, yes, you run that particular, so I can start to use inferences of what I'm talking about to those particular people. So it's really useful 
to actually start even from the beginning, once you get into a little bit of dialogue already with them, of course, with a very big crowd, it's things like, you know, put up your hand, put it, you know, it depends on, you know, things like that. Put them in an emoji we would have with the different sides. So make sure that the engagement activities don't distract, but let them take part. The engagement activity has got to make sure that it doesn't get to, they're confused about what they're doing, uh, what's happening, what am I supposed to, and then of course it kind of lo loses itself. I mean, obviously that can start to happen. You can bring itself out of that. But it's just, yeah, spend a certain amount of time that everyone can feel involved, therefore involved in the whole presentation. I mean, obviously, if I could see all of you, I'd be looking at your eyes. I can't see your eyes. I'm just looking directly at the camera at you. But the point is, it's very important, that communication, okay? Thanks, Mihaela, for that great question. Um, Nook, Nook, oh, golly, I can't pronounce that name. That's great. Is that Greek? Uh, Nook, uh, Nook, I think. I think. Is an average number per minute that someone can enjoy more to see? Also, what is the correct size of letters? Good question. But one of the things, uh, I'm going to start with the size of the letters. Test it out with where people are sitting and everything. Make sure that it's legible. Ask people who have problems with colors and, and things like that. Check it out with them as well. So, Go through it with different uh, people, checking out people who have, you know, have to wear glasses and everything. Try it out, the different things, as much as possible. It's an average number per minute that someone can enjoy more to see. Um, average number, is that number of slides per minute? Um, <laughs> it's difficult to really give a particular number. The only thing I can recommend is test it out, try it out, because at the end of the day, your, you and your colleagues and your friends will work out what, what feels good. And the more you can just keep trying it out, the different things, the more you can learn from it. Monica, how to capture audiences focus for one hour. Great question. That interaction thing, which um, Mihaela brought up, interacting more than anything is a great idea. Um, and of course, Chummy's answered as well. So isn't it better to use more visuals, aids than texts? Um, absolutely. The more... The more you can cover different sides, so you've got the visual side, you've got the text side, you've got you're covering all these different people who who deal better with different sides. What do you do in case if you notice your audience is getting bored and not really pay attention? Change your change your theme. Uh, sorry, change your um, speed and everything. Suppose my, suddenly go so louder in something, or change something, or suddenly ask a question. You know what I mean? Make some variety into it so people don't become bored with the... So that's what I recommend. What kind of engagement activities do you recommend? Depends on the size of your audience, Kevin, because if you've got a really big group, you're having to ask... Send an emoji, if it was like on this, we said send an emoji if you... This, you know, or put up your hands if you can see all of them there. Um, if you've got a smaller group, you can have met some of the people already beforehand in the interim, and you can mention their names and their particular interest, and already people want to sort of take part. I hope that sort of covers it. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> Fabulous. It's great. All these questions are wonderful. Really nice. So go watch the time there. Um, I think uh, Chummy will be reminding me soon that I need to go into the third and last part. So boost your presentation skills. So a successful presentation really should offer you know, more than consistent structure and traditional size uh, slides. It's gestures, facial expression, voice and conviction must all be right. Remember, the audience is there to engage with you, not a slide deck. I mean, I lived in Spain for seven years, so I'm very used to gesticulations, which is, of course, you know, typically in Spain. Um, so there's certain things, but there's very useful certain things that you can use. So let's have a look. So what kind of presenter will you be? Now, you know, remember right at the beginning when you asked to think about, you know, the best and worst presentation, well, normally the difference between the two is the person doing the talking. So some people believe that good, confident speakers have sort of natural gifts, that you either have it or you don't. But really, present, presenting is a skill that can be learned, just like any other skill. And the great news is that there is lots that you can do today to actually improve your presentation style. All right, so adapt to your audience. How many people do you, are you presenting to? Keep that in mind, the communication. There's a colleague of ours there giving a talk there. And it's just, you know, is how many people are you presenting to working with that group? 
Turn crowds to conversation. Think about the space you're presenting to. Aim to understand the crowds are really individuals. If it makes sense for one individual, it'll make sense to many. So it's, it's difficult when you're presenting online, even though the numbers can be much bigger, you, you tend to treat it as if I'm delivering to just one person and try to talk to them directly, but it's really useful in that way. So audience participation. So interact with the audience. So large groups ask for a quick show of hands. How many people in this room watch Game of Thrones? You know, stand up if you like Beyonce, that kind of thing. Medium groups ask people directly to individuals. Where are you from? Have you used Google products before? What did you think? Split the group up into pairs or half, you know, uh, set them tasks, ask them to present back when they have actually learned. One-to-one -one group, you know, of course, it's, it's a conversation. Ask them to carry out the tasks you have been discussing. So you can really show how to actually add an image into a, into a website. The big thing is one-to-one -one groups, of course, you know, ask them for their comments, where they're coming from, so you can understand them first, particularly. And then, of course, online, can you actually enable the chat? You know, you have to make, have a moderator to build in breaks to check the chat as you get through this session, you know, because it's so important you need those. And then ask them questions. There's nothing worse than a one-sided conversation. Ask your audience questions. Get to know them to really make the session more memorable. You know, it will also help you present the content they want to know. I mean, I know I'm sort of rushing with a lot to cover, <laughs> but the more you can do that, the better. And don't talk at them nonstop. You know, have you sat in a presentation where the presenter was racing to get to the end? Sorry, I'm doing that now uh, and didn't stop and wants to interact with the audience. What, but this is not, when, not once. So how did it feel? So it, it's very important that you have a chance to interact with them, change the tempo, all those kind of things. And what, sh what should you not do when handling questions? Never panic over difficult situations. We used to run with Google Digital Garage. We had Google stores. And one of the big things was if a person asked the question and you didn't know the answer, you'd go, I don't know. Shall we, shall we Google together to work? <laughs> that kind of thing. You know, it's kind of like there's nothing wrong with. And the other thing is you can use what's called, you can, <laughs> in our talks, we have a car park. So you can keep track of questions you can't answer. And the thing is, it could be because it's too complicated a moment for the group. You put it in the car park to bring up later, to discuss, to take further. And it's sex expectation that you won't actually know the answer to every question, but you'll find out the, the, you know, the answers in the future. And always follow up as promised. Very, very important. And never make up the answer. Please never go, yeah, it's that. And you don't know what you're talking about. And listen to them. It sounds obvious, but it is really important. When listening, repeat back what has actually been said. So you, they know you were really listening. It will help you remember too. And acknowledge and acknowledgement is a great way to to actually increase the confidence of the group that their comments and questions are taken seriously. Great question. I understand your point. Sends a message that this is a friendly, welcoming environment, particularly. Avoid particularly content overload. So, you know, tailor the content to the people in the room. Make it relevant to the audience that they will engage with what you are saying. Focus, have three key verbal points prepared for each slide. Make sure you can recite these in less than a minute without looking at the slide. And then pause. When you first show a slide, pause. Give yourself time to recall your key points for this slide and give your audience time to look at the slide and then to refocus on you. This will feel unnatural to you, but to the audience, you will look composed and confident. Remember, just stand there, relax, take a deep breath, ready to get started. Give yourself some leeway with that. And then your voice is a powerful weapon. So think about how to adapt it depending on the situation you're in. Maybe maybe not a weapon, but a powerful tool to communicate. Um, I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a musician, of course, and I'm used to with the singing where you projecting, and of course, as well as an actor, you get used to projecting your voice right to the back of the auditorium and everything. You're not raising your voice, you are projecting your voice. So your voice, Beyonce will tell you, is very, very important. So there's some things, so tailor how loud, 
your voice is to the group size. Make sure everyone can hear you. You know, use it to get attention. Use it as a tool. Speak quietly, mid-sentence, to get the room to focus on what you are really saying or increase the volume to make a point. You know, a style adopted to suit your audience and the subject. Think about how this will actually change depending on the size of your audience and experience level of your group. Tone, you know, vary, vary it a lot. Suddenly, don't speak in a monotone like you, you know, a robot or whatever. That's the worst thing. You know, change it, you know, and yeah, change the pace. Pace can maintain a steady speed and remember to pause. Repent, remember to pause and breathe. Don't rush through the content. We know, of course, when we're talking, we often breathe through the mouth. Maybe even just close your mouth, breathe in through your nose. That will give you time to pause. Okay. Delivering your presentation in a calm, well-paced way will make you seem much more confident and credible, you know, even if presenting is terrifying for you. What is your body language communicating? You know, comparing the gesture, stance, facial expression, these are all the more important when all eyes of an audience are on you. When you are presenting strong, positive body language becomes an essential tool in helping you build credibility, express your emotion, and connect with your listeners. Okay. Also, the different things are the body language we use. We're going to, you know, think about how our body language, you know, are we happy? Are we sad? Nervous or confident? Honest or untrustworthy? <laughs> different things. Okay, so we've got here power poses. There's a Wonder Woman, the performer, you know, all these different things. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but take on those particular poses. See how it feels. Get the feel of it. Be mindful of your stance, your movement, your connecting and everything. Your eye contact, so important. Fix your gaze on one person for five or six seconds. Move to another person. Pause from time to time to create a rhythm. Break up the delivery into chunks, okay? And avoid um. Practice, practice, practice. Go through it again and again, you know? Keep working on it. And then, of course, adapt to your audience. Think about your voice. Consider your body language and practice your performance. On to, yes, it's okay, Chami. You don't need to make it big letters. I know there's three minutes left. <laughs> so any questions, any final questions, everyone? Be fascinating to know. No. Nope. <laughs> okay. So... No questions at the moment. So how to prepare a presentation for an audience with different experience? Very good question, Monica. One of the things is certainly with my experience as well, with when you are when you are actually teaching many different people and everything, and you've got to keep all these different people into, into mind when you're communicating. So is to try and make sure that you've got visual, you've got audio, you've got you know, the uh, text. There's all of these different areas that they can pick you up that they can understand, they can follow you on. So, Monica, the only thing I can suggest is go through it. Check all of those different areas. Um, don't just mainly or literally report what's written in your report because your audience can also read them. Engagement is, yeah, it's the key to prevent absolutely engagement. Get them involved. Um, the best duration, Jota, this is a good question as well, but, of course, it's make sure that they can keep keep stay with you and don't forget you can break up your talk into sections so they can have that section then they have a break and then they and then they have a chance to talk to each other and you have a chance to just chat to them one to one which is really nice um be supplying exemplar incorporating uh, archetypes that's a very interesting one angela no i'm afraid we don't actually have particular archetypes but certainly you know what i mean there's so much you can put you know in your talk and all the rest but yeah Sorry, we don't cover that. <laughs> We've only got two minutes left. But anyway, I'm going to have to move on because we're running out of time. So what are your next steps? Okay, of course, we've covered a lot of it. Don't forget there's free career certificates, great opportunity. That's Career Cert UK. And uh, so everyone, thank you for all your questions. You're interacting. 
been absolutely fabulous. We're going to wrap up here. It's about out of time. I hope that's been a useful dive, particularly, you know, into doing, getting all presentations ready. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the session, if you are interested in more training from Google Digital Garage, there are a few ways you can continue learning. We are running lots of different Google Digital Garage webinars. We're updating a lot of them, a lot of them AI now as well, and all sorts of different fascinating things. If you'd like to check out the schedule of the webinars, Please see information in the description below, and no doubt Chummy will provide that to you. Also, if you'd like to carry on learning online in your own time, there's ones 24-7 which are pre preset and everything. So thank you, everyone, for joining today. Thank you, Chummy. You've been absolutely fab. We look forward to welcoming you to again to another Google Digital Garrett training session soon. Thank you.